Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be walking you through the process of setting up um, three new Merg boards. Um, in this example I'm using a CAN USB which we use to talk to the computer. I'm using a CAN pan which is a panel for, MIP, for MIMIC panels and I have a CAN SOL here which is connected to two SEEP point motors. Um, this bird's nest of wiring here is best explained here. Let me just. So, what we've got here is a positive and a negative 12 volt feed. Um, and we then have the can low and the can high. Now, all of the modules on the board on the demonstration here are connected to the can high and the can low respectively. It's very important that these are the right way round on every board that the high is connected to the high and the low is connected to the low. On the end of the bus I have a termination resistor. One thing to note here is that the can USB is only connected to the negative or the zero, the common. It doesn't have a positive. It takes its power from the USB when it's plugged into the computer. On the console, I have two seat motors connected into uh, output one and two. They share a common. Uh, the console is able to control four solenoids. Um, coming back here, that's what I've just explained there. Um, so the first thing we need to do is all these boards are currently as new as built in what's called slim mode. This is indicated by the green light that we have here and we have here. What we need to do is to configure them and put them into flim mode. So to do that we need to download a piece of software called the FCU, the flim configuration utility and we get that from the Merg website we go into members links knowledge base we scroll down to documentation and firmware and under there there should be a section called the flim soft configuration utility and you want to download the latest version and when you've got that it will look a little like this Um, completely empty and with nothing to do. Um, the first time you started up it may have prompted you with a name. Enter a name like this. In this example I'm just going to call this demo. I'm going to leave base num node number as it is. Oh, that already exists. Of course it does. I'm going to call it demo2. Um, down here I haven't what you can see over here but I haven't actually plugged the can USB into the computer yet so I have a can a USB cable here um, in the software here it, it says COM port none and that's because when it when it started up it wasn't able to figure out where the where the can USB was so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug that in here and Windows will make it sound and for a new install it may install some drivers and then say your device is ready. Now that I'm in this window here I can check I can make sure I can start my communication so I can do start communications. So here I've got 4, 3 and 5 a little trick I can show you here so we know 4, 3 and 5 but we don't know which one we are currently plugged in on so I'm going to click cancel there then I'm going to unplug it again now I'm going to go communications, start communications, and we have three and four. So that means when I plug this in here, it's running on COM5. Oh, didn't want to do that. Start comms, COM5s, OK. There we go. So now the computer is able to talk to the CAN USB. So the first thing we want to do is to put these devices into flim mode. We do that, every board has a small press switch. This one is here, and on this one it's hiding back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the press switch, 
until the green light goes off and the yellow ones just start flashing. And then the software has detected this and it says new node. So what are we going to call it? I'm going to just call this can pan. And OK that. So with any new install or even when you introduce any board into the layout, what you want to do is right click the node here and read its properties. That goes off and sends a series of messages onto the bus which the device then responds. We can close that. We then read its node values and then we read its events. We don't have any events in this but we're going to clear them if we've got any. So at this point this now this device can pan is now in flim mode. And whilst we're here I'm going to do the same here for the can sol. So I'm going to hold the button down till the light goes off at which point it should pop up in the FCU and again same thing I'm going to call this can sol and okay that because it's a new board remember the three R's read its properties read its NV's and read its events which it won't have any okay there we go so at this point we now have two boards campan and cancel what I'm now going to show you is the test module TM7 which is available from Merg and what this does it is allows us to simulate um, a, a, a mimic panel, a, a panel that you use to control your layout, and it gives us 32 buttons and 32 lights. Now it does this with eight buttons and four columns. So when this dip switch here is in the position one, we are using this first column here of events, buttons. So when we press this button, it would correspond to a button 1, button 5, button 9, button 13, 17, 21, etc. And then if we change to the second dip switch, put that one down and put that one up, we'd move to this next column of numbers, which would be 2, 6, 10, 14, 18. So with 8 buttons, we're 4, 8 to 32, where you can mimic 32 buttons. And the same for LEDs. We have 32 LEDs up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch button one because I'm only going to be dealing with two buttons. And what we do is we mount this panel straight on top of. So I've got some lights on here which are left some leftovers from the previous configuration, which doesn't seem to have cleared. But anyway, um, so what we can do here is as we press the buttons, we can see these events coming through and these are the events associated with this campaign and as I said we've got event 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, 25 because that corresponded to dip switch 1. Um, so what I want to do, what I'm going to walk through first of all is when I press button 1 I want the uh, first LED to come on and when I want button 5, uh, button, two, uh, button 2 which is going to be uh, 5 is pressed but light 5 will come on. So how do we go about doing that? So by pressing the buttons we've read these events have been associated with the campaign. So this is the event 1 and what we can do is edit the uh, edit the event. Now I can do that by right clicking edit event or just double clicking the event. And I could rename this button Ooh, he can't you can't rename there. You right click the event and you can't edit it there you right click edit name button one and since I'm here I'm going to edit this and just call it button five so double clicking that and what you've got some options here of how you want this button to behave and I'm going to call it an on off button so that means when I press it once and release it it'll be on and when I press it again it'll be off and because the software knows about what the CANPAN's capabilities are, we've got switches and we've got LEDs. And in this circumstance, I want LED1 to come on. I OK that. It sends a bunch of messages. So let's try it out. So I press button. Hopefully this light will go off because this will be old config that's getting cleared. There we go. Off. On. 
off, on. So now I'm going to do the same for button 5. I double click it in here, I configure it as an on off button and in this I want LED 5 to come on. It sends some messages, I'm going to turn LED, in fact I'll turn that one off and then I'll press the next button and nothing happens and I press it again it comes on. Off, on, off, on. So now we have, we're able to turn our two lights on and off independently. So that's great. So we have these two buttons, but how do we move these seat motors over here? So how do we now move forward and get this button press moving the, serv the solenoid? So we do that by selecting the CAN pan in the FCU and the event that we want to trigger on the CAN sol. I've highlighted the row here, I'm holding my mouse button down and I'm dropping it onto the CAN sol. At which point we get this dialog that says, what do you want it to do? And in my case, I want it to move output 1 to A. I do that, I OK it, and so now, if I hold up this and I press button 1, that's because it's on, that's because it's off. So sometimes you have this thing where the, the button is inverted to what you want it to do which is easy enough to flip but so pressing the button servo moves there uh, solenoid moves there and off on off so it's also then really simple to do the same thing to get the second one to move we've got this but second button that is turning the light on but it's not moving anything yet and how do we do that pick it up drop it onto the console say which output we want to move in which case I'm going to do two so now Button one moves this solenoid. You see it moving. And button two does this solenoid. So no direct wiring between this switch and this solenoid or this switch and this solenoid. You can of course further take take this further and say actually button 1, button 5 maybe, I could edit that event here, no I can't, I can edit the event, I select the console, so this now shows you what's associated with it, so button 5, oh not that, I could edit the event and have it move both of the solenoids at the same time, so button 1, oh I didn't, I did button 5 didn't I, excuse me, Button 5, both move, let's see, 1, 2, 1, 2, so that's really neat. Uh, I'm just going to remove that second one, do nothing, in which case now we've changed it back, so this one will move this one, and this one, the second button 5 move that one okay hopefully that's given you a bit of a breakdown of what's possible here and potential of how simple your layout wiring could be all you're going to end up with are your solenoids coming back to this board and then this board can be located physically anywhere as long as it's connected onto your onto the bus this could be a physical panel with a, a dab that you touch, which is essentially the same as pressing a, a push button as we're doing here. And you could have some LED indicators to show the state of what's going on with that point.